Hey everyone, Anthony here from Mashup Math. Thank you again for stopping by. I am pumped that you are joining us on this lesson where we get to explore exponential growth in the context of the zombie apocalypse. Hey there everyone, thank you again for stopping by here at Mashup Math on this lesson where we get to explore exponential functions and just how fast a population can grow or how fast a population can decay. <laughs> now as grim as this situation may be, let's see how we can use our math skills to model it and figure out just how long it would take for the entire US to become the undead. <laughs> Now, before we look at a population as big as the United States, let's start out with a group of just 100 people, and this is before any incident. So our human population would be 100, and our zombie population would be zero. So we can visually model this population of 100 humans using a grid with a length of 10 and a height of 10. So this 10 by 10 grid represents 100 normal human beings. Now at this point, everything is okay until some incident happens and one member of that human population becomes infected. We refer to this as patient zero and now our human population drops to 99 <laughs> and our zombie population is one. And now here comes the chaos. That first infected person will inevitably infect a second person. So now our zombie population has grown to two infected individuals, while our human population has dropped to 98. And now we can see how as this process continues, where the zombie population continues to double, we can see just how quickly the zombie population can grow while the human population simultaneously shrinks. So now we can see just how quickly an infection can spread, and now we are left with a zombie population of 100 and a human population of zero. They have completely taken over. I got him. Now, if we look at the growth of our zombie population on a graph, as time increased, the zombie population continued to double. And if we express this with a line, it would have to be a curved line and not a straight line, since this is an exponential relationship and not a linear one. Now, on the same graph, let's also show the population of humans as time increases, which decreases by half each time until we are whittled down to zero. Notice that these graphs intersect and that point of intersection represents the moment when the human population and the zombie population are equal. In other words, we have a one-to-one -one ratio. So for every human, we have a zombie. <laughs> now again, these graphs are curves so they represent exponential functions. In the case of the zombie population, we can call this exponential growth. And in the case of the human population, we can call it exponential decay. So we have one population rapidly increasing over time and another rapidly decreasing over time. So if we want to model growth or decay using an equation, we have to use one in the form y equals a times b raised to the x power. Notice here that our variable is an exponent, which is what makes an exponential equation unique. Now, when we graph an exponential growth equation, our graph is going to be a curve that often resembles a hockey stick where the initial growth is slow and almost linear, but quickly becomes extremely rapid and exponential. Note that in such equations, the a value always has to be greater than zero. Now, if the value of b is greater than one, the function will represent growth. However, if the value of b is less than one, but greater than zero, if it's in between, then the function will represent decay. 
So now let's go ahead and replace a and b with 1 and 2 respectively. And we can rewrite this function as y equals 2 to the x, just simplified form. And we are going to use this equation to model the growth of our zombie population and see just how long it would take for the entire U.S. population to become infected. <laughs> So now let's go ahead and graph this exponential function. We are going to label our x-axis as the number of zombie encounters and our y-axis as the zombie population. So now let's go ahead and work on filling out our table. We can start with the value x equals 0, which represents the time before there were any zombie encounters. So in terms of our equation, we have to replace the x, the exponent, with 0, and then we can evaluate, and we know that 2 to the 0, or anything raised to the power of 0, just equals 1. So before there are any zombie encounters, we always start with our first infected person, and we should also realize that any exponential equation in this form is going to pass through that point 0, 1 because anything raised to the zero power is always one. So these kinds of graphs do not pass through the origin. They always pass through the point zero, one. And we can reinforce this concept by thinking about that term patient zero being assigned to the first person who gets infected. Again, because anything to the zero power is going to be one. So once that initial zombie has his first encounter with a human, our population grows to 2. After our second encounter, our population grows to 4. After our third encounter, 2 to the 3 power is 8, so our zombie population is 8. So now we can continue this process of inputting x values to find the corresponding y values so that we can see what other points that our graph is going to pass through. And we can continue this process and complete our graph. So from our graph here, we can see that our initial population growth was slow and steady over the first few encounters, but quickly becomes quite rapid, resembling that hockey stick curve that we spoke about earlier. So now that we have run out of room on our graph, we can go back to the table and look at just how quickly the zombie population is growing as the number of encounters increases. <laughs> so now that we have a better grasp of how populations grow, let's try to figure out how much time it would take for the entire United States population to turn into zombies. So to answer this question, we are going to apply the population growth formula, where P represents the final population, P sub 0 represents the initial or starting population, E just represents the exponential function, R represents the growth rate, which we have to express as a decimal, and T represents the time in years. So if every single person in the United States became a zombie, our final population would be approximately 319 million zombies. And we want to see how long it would take that initial population of the first 100 zombies to convert the rest of the country. Now, E represents the exponential function, and we're not going to change that. Our growth rate has been approximately double each encounter, so we are going to use 200%, or as a decimal, just 2.0. And finally, T, which represents time, is what we are trying to solve for. We want to figure out how long it would take, so we're just going to leave T by itself for now. Now, we can simplify this by dividing both sides by 100, of course, on the right side, those 100s will cancel out. On the left side, our quotient is 3,190,000. Now, in order to get t out of that exponent slot, we have to take the natural log of both sides. On the left side, the natural log of 3,190,000 is 6.5. On the right side, the natural log of the exponential function to the 2t is just 2t, okay? So they cancel each other out. The final step is to divide both sides by 2, and we are left with t equals 3.25, so we can conclude that at this rate, it would take approximately 3 years and 3 months for the entire U.S. population 
to become zombies. That is, of course, unless a group of really awesome and tough people banded together and formed a resistance. Carl! Carl! Should probably make a show about that. So that concludes this grim lesson. I'm going to leave you guys with two discussion questions. Feel free to share your responses in the comments below. I would love to hear what you think, and I promise you that I will respond. And remember, we have an awesome YouTube channel, Math Help for All. Those who subscribe, survive. Catch you guys next time. See ya. <laughs>